Last night I treated my wife like a queen. We've been going through a rough patch lately and this seemed the time to set things right. I'd taken the day off from work, ostensibly to take our two kids, one of each, Jack 14, Chana 12, to a week-long soccer camp, but mostly to make sure everything was perfect. I began by sending two dozen long stem red roses to Melinda at her work. Yeah, I know, not exactly Shakespeare but I figured it would do the trick. I was right, but you knew that. I got a very passionate kiss at the front door plus a report on how jealous her co-workers were. Melinda fixed me with a lusty gaze, lucky doesn't being to describe the night you're going to have. I took charge immediately and corrected her. This night is all about you. Step two was to draw my love a steamy bubble bath, complete with a glass of perfectly chilled Chardonnay. I told her to take her time while I got dinner ready. Not that I was cooking, I simply drove to her favorite Italian place and picked up dinner for two. I popped it into the oven upon my return. If you're enjoying my content, consider joining my Patreon community. By becoming a patron, you'll get access to full parts of my videos much earlier than everyone else. Plus, you'll be supporting me to create even more awesome content for you. Check out the link in the description to join now. I just finished setting the table when I heard Melinda behind me. You are a naughty, naughty boy. I turned to see a vision in red. Melinda was wearing everything I'd bought today. She had no idea just how naughty I planned on being. Dinner and lots of wine later, I lead her to our bedroom. She followed willingly as I slowly undressed her along the way. Laying her on the bed I rained kisses all over her body. Basically I tortured her with foreplay. Constantly moving around her body as soon as she got really into whatever I was doing. We rested for a few minutes, saying those words that lovers say. Actually I was doing most of the talking. She was somewhat incoherent. I told her again and again how much I loved her. Then I went down on her again. This time adding a finger then too. Her face was a mask of conflicting emotions. After all that I crawled into bed next to her and fell immediately asleep. I slept very soundly. Awaking early the next morning, I showered and was out the door before she knew it. I left a note reminding her that I would have to work late to make up for taking the day before off. Oh, I definitely had my work cut out for me today. Today, I am sitting in ambush for AS. I checked my watch any minute now. The S would be my wife of 16 years Melinda, the aforementioned queen of last night's amorous activities. Melinda's been cheating on me for, well as near as I can determine, the better part of a year. I've been sure for the last month, suspicious for two before that. My suspicions were based on the little things that flow back and forth between couples, the behaviors, the habits, and most importantly the easy evasions that hint something's not quite right here. For instance, there were lots of little things that by themselves were all innocently explained. Things like R.S. life being way down while Melinda dressing sexy was way up. She was feeling it. I sure as hell wasn't getting it. I know I know that's not much to go on. One of the primary instances that caught my attention and coalesced my observations into suspicions was a night out, without the kids. Melinda met me at the restaurant having come directly from work. Come turned out to be the operative word because Melinda had the unmistakable glow of someone who just had really good S. It was in her eyes, her face, and particularly in the way she moved. That night when I should have gotten lucky, she begged off the thing citing a mild yeast infection. I settled for a BJ and decided to find out the truth. So I started checking up on her, monitoring her time away from me, checking the laundry, and listening very, very carefully to everything she said. It's amazing the things you pick up in common conversations when you really pay attention. I've always operated on the idea that a woman will do everything she can to avoid an outright lie. This doesn't mean you'll get the truth. It means you have to really listen and consider all of the possible meaning of the words being spoken. Almost as if you were playing verbal chess. So many possibilities and permutations. I was surprised at the subtle insinuation of disrespect that permeated our interactions. There was an undeniable condescension. I seemed to have lost my former position in the hierarchy and equality of our relationship. That and it was difficult to get a hold of her at work on Tuesday and Thursday afternoons. Even though in my mind my suspicions had turned to certainty there was nothing worth going to see a lawyer about. Then I found what I needed, actual physical evidence. A pair of sea-crusted black underwear. I knew the last time I'd seen her wearing these. 
I knew to the day the last time we'd had it. The discrepancies between these two dates added up to infidelity. As far as I was concerned at that point, she was more likely guilty than innocent. Confronting Melinda was a little more problematic. I mean, she'd been lying to me for who knows how long. I assumed that she had her cheating excused by some form of perverted rationalization. I decided on a simple, straightforward approach. I suggested another husband and wife only night out reminding her that she owed me. I asked her specifically to wear the black. That night as we dressed I reminded her about it, and she said I wouldn't be disappointed. Dinner was fine as I generously poured on the attention and the wine. By the time we got home Melinda was as horny as I'd seen her in years. Strip for me. I lay back against the headboard hands behind my head. Melinda began to sway drunkenly but shook her head. Come on Melinda. We haven't had it in almost a month. Actually it was just two and a half weeks, but I wanted her to say that. We had it the day you went on that trip. It's only been, she paused, two weeks. Two and a half weeks. Fine. Two and a half weeks. One fact agreed to. Come on take it off. Okay. But don't expect this every time you take me out. I nodded my head as Melinda slowly disrobed. Shoes first, then stockings. She showed me a lot of leg, but no underwear were visible. Her blouse came undone slowly as she labored over every button. Off it came and underneath she was wearing the sheer black bra. She really put the tease on taking off her bra. She did a slow turn, and when her back was to me she reached behind and unclasped her bra. Damn she was good. She slowly turned back to face me. I can't wait to see those babe. Huh. I saw a wave of anxiety sweep across her face. It only served to heighten my readiness. I was ready for some kind of trick on her part. She didn't disappoint me. She unzipped her skirt bent over and hooked her thumbs in the material. Stop. Straighten up Melinda. Hey, who's doing this anyway? She was trying to joke, but I heard the hard edge beneath her tone. Hey, I thought this was about pleasing me. I want to see those. What's the big deal with it, Tim? Come on. I gave you those as an anniversary gift last year, remember? They symbolize our marriage, our intimate bond. Melinda let the skirt fall, revealing no underwear. She put her hands on her hips, Tata. I was temporarily taken aback. I hadn't expected this. Fortunately, my body did not betray me. I was surprised at how quickly I re-seized the initiative. Where is it? Put them on and start over. Odd him. Look a little closer. Yeah, whatever. I congratulated myself on sticking to the issue and a good retort. I asked to see my wife in black, not my wife looking like a peace star. Peace star? She was off balance for a moment and then her disrespect for me came roaring to the fore. I did this for you. Says who? I've never asked you to. I asked for the black. I was ready now and knew the perfect line. You look sesseo. Her eyes narrowed as she flushed with anger. Just put them on please. I changed my tone to a more accommodating one. What is with you and those? She was losing it, and I couldn't have felt more in control. I like them. I like the way you look in them. Why is it so hard for you to do one simple thing for me? Would you please put them on? I couldn't find them, Tim. All right? She was furious with me. They're probably in the wash. You always wash your lingerie together. You have the bra. Where is it? I was not about to let this go. I told you I couldn't find them. She was getting pissed and I just got calmer and calmer. Hey, don't get mad at me. I'm just the guy who gave them to you and asked you to wear them for him. I shrugged in innocence. All you had to do is say something earlier. I wouldn't have insisted if you had told me the truth. All you had to do was be truthful. What's so hard about that? So the last time you wore them was right before my trip. I remember because you looked so good in them when we were getting ready for bed. You took them off, hey. Maybe they got kicked under the bed? Look Tim, can we just forget about it right now? The horniness was draining from her face. I could see a glimmer of doubt in her eyes. Sure no problem. Melinda sighed in relief. I wasn't done with her yet. I think I remember where I bought those. Man they really meant a lot to me. Yes Tim. Her voice was edged with wariness. I can see that. She stepped back from the bed. Her desire clearly ebbing. Hmm. The last time I saw you with them on was right here in this room? I rolled off the bed and knelt beside it, lifting the sham. You took them off before we had it, right? I think you were standing right about here, 
remember? I remember, Tim. I was standing here. I took them off and we had it. But now, I'm standing here, and I seem to be developing a headache. Melinda began to pick up her clothes. Well, what's the problem? They're just underwear. No big deal. Melinda looked miserable. Are we okay, Melinda? Is there something you want to tell me? I mean, it's been two and a half weeks since we had it, and I make a simple request, and now I'm in the doghouse. Why didn't you just tell me that you didn't know where they were? What's so hard about being honest with me? Why would you try to hide something like that? I don't know. I didn't want to disappoint you. I know it's been a while since we've been together. We're both so busy with careers and family. I guess I've turned next to nothing into a big to-do. I'm sorry. Me too. Well, how about we reschedule while well, looky here? I smiled as I pulled out the crusty underwear and extended them to her. She took them, looking puzzled, momentarily horrified, then, surprisingly, confident. So that's where they've been? I thought I'd looked there. I had to give her credit. She was recovering very quickly. Go ahead, put them on. They're filthy, Tim. I'll make sure you're the first to see them after I wash them. That's it. I had to admire her brazenness. Why? Is there something else? We haven't had it in two and a half weeks. We agreed the last time you wore these you took them off before we had it. Explain to me what they're all crusty with. I silently congratulated myself on not sounding accusatory. It looks like C. What happened next was a bravura performance of lies and evasions. We were wrong on the dates and timings of when we'd had it. She even made a big deal over realizing that I suspected her of seeing someone else. I was jealous over nothing. The capper. She though it was cute that I suspected her of being A.S. crazed vixen. I apologized profusely for my jealousy and poor memory. I watched the look of conquest glow from her. I'm sure she thought everything was alright. It wasn't alright. She was wrong. It wasn't nothing. And there is nothing cute about being ass. I knew that much. My apologies dissolved into a white-hot quiet anger. My anger ushered in a change of perspective. I was no longer in doubt I knew then that she was F someone else. As far as I was concerned our marriage was over. I knew and soon, she would know that I knew. When you're no longer in denial, you can actually find out a lot in a very short amount of time. I wanted incontrovertible evidence. Basically I wanted to catch her in the act, and I was willing to do whatever it took. It's amazing what they can do with modern GPS equipment, a tap on your own phones, a bit of computer snooping, and a couple of digital voice recorders. All too soon I had a fairly clear picture. Who he was, what they did, how often, and most importantly, when they planned to meet next. Her lover was some guy named Ernie. They met two to three times per week, Tuesday, Thursday, and frequently Saturdays, usually at a motel on the other side of town. It all seemed so routine when you listened to the recordings. The biggest surprise for me was the complete lack of guilt on Melinda's part. In the tape conversations, I was usually characterized as simply someone to be scheduled around. That was it. I was a complication to their being together. When I realized Melinda's utter lack of concern and the depth of her disrespect for me, I went from some ambiguous thoughts of possible reconciliation, with her really having to make it up to me, to absolute retribution, she was going to pay. I wasn't going to fight for her. She was now the enemy. I was going to fight her for everything. It's amazing what that kind of clarity that can do for you. I can even tell you the exact moment that I reached that tipping point. It occurred in the hearing of her side of a single conversation shortly after the panty incident. A voice recorder in her car got this side of a cell phone conversation between Melinda and Loverboy. Melinda? Suspicious? Not anymore. Tim trusts me completely. You should see him go out of his way to be nice to me. It really is quite cute. Melinda? I just explained that the crusty and the dirty underwear he'd found was his. I said that I'd been looking for weeks for those. I thanked him for finding them underneath the washer. He bought it without a second thought. Melinda. Laughing. Yeah, but he's my dumb ass. Melinda. Yeah, I do adore it. Be patient, I'm almost there. Melinda. No, Ernie. I've told you before. I loved him. He's my husband. Melinda. Yes, I love you too. But in a different way, thank God I don't have to choose. I have the best of both worlds. A husband who makes love to me, and a lover who totally F me. It's funny the things you can consider when you no longer care about the other person. 
The bee was going to pay big time. Playing the cards you're dealt, my payback was multi-pronged. I wanted Melinda to suffer short-term and long-term. If things went as planned, Melinda would never forget her betrayal. I can't say I was looking to put a hurt on Ernie. As far as I was concerned, he was just an opportunistic prick. If trouble came his way, so be it. Our kids were a different story. I wanted to protect them from the initial blast of our family dissolving. Plus, I wanted it all to land on Melinda. I wanted her to look into their sad faces and know that she alone was responsible. In that way, they actually determined my timing. I waited for the school year to end and arranged for them to attend a week-long soccer camp at a university a couple of hours drive away. The camp ran Monday through Friday.